This is the Range Rush Reversal Strategy. The Range Rush Reversal is a strategy that I created to make day trading easily understandable and simplify price action. The indicator is effective due to its simplicity and compatibility with other strategies and indicators. Installing the indicator is easy. You would just click the link in the description, navigate to the trading view page, scroll down to add to favorite indicators, click that, open up a fresh chart, go to the indicators tab, and under favorites, scroll down until you see range rush reversal. Click that, and there you go, add it to your chart. An issue that traders often face is not knowing where or when to enter and exit their trades. This indicator is intended to provide some solutions to that problem. A foundation of my trading strategy is understanding that stock prices trade within ranges, and I believe mastering price action is within identifying what range a stock is currently trading in, which makes it easier to identify where price is breaking out, consolidating, or reversing. This indicator does just that by implementing two types of ranges the opening range, and the average daily range. The opening range is the area between the high and low of the first 30 minutes, or hour of the trading day. It depends what you want to use. So as you can see on this chart, if I start this trading day from the very beginning, as this is the five minute time frame, as we progress through the trading day, 30 minutes has been established, we see that we get this fill, right? This rectangular shape, which is defining the area between the high and low of the first 30 minutes. The first 30 minutes of market is typically the most volatile time of any given trading day, during which the lack of information can be difficult to determine what direction the stock is going to go. As we can see here on JP Morgan, we really don't know what side the market is going to take JP Morgan. Uh, we kind of got lots of wicks here within the first 30 minutes and we went up, we went down. So there's a lot happening here within the first 30 minutes because people are exiting their positions as well as trying to start new ones. So a lot of volume is happening here, a lot of volatility. It's important to note that on most trading days, a measured move happens between 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So this is how we can use the opening range, this area between the high and low of the first 30 minutes, to our advantage. So once the opening range is established, the following scenarios are to be considered. One, if price breaks above the range, above this rectangle, the indicator would signal a potential long position, so an opportunity to take calls. If it breaks below this range, that would be a potential short position, a potential opportunity to take puts if you're trading options. If price breaks neither the high nor the low, that can signal intraday consolidation, which can mean that we don't take a trade at all. So let's see what happens here on JP Morgan here on the opening range. So here, the moment we break the opening range, that is known as the opening range breakout or orb. So you'll likely hear me use the term orb often. Okay. What well, these, this dashed line, it highlights green when price crosses above it. And that signals the orb breakout up. So at this moment, when we break above this level, is an opportunity to take a long position to buy shares or to buy a call. What's highlighted here, that's a bit faint, so try to look pretty hard if you can see it. But these are the these dotted lines are the price targets. Okay? So these are your price targets or profit targets. You can use either term. And these are determined by the size of the opening range. So however much we size we created on the opening range is what we can determine to use here 
as our profit targets. And these are automatically calculated on any given trading day. These are reference points to take profit on your position, and they're typically pretty accurate. You'll see price tend to respect them at most given times, okay? So as we progress through this trading day, you see that we hit this first uh, portion of dotted lines here, right? You see price kind of consolidating and moving around it till it moves, you know, it's kind of respecting it, using it slightly as some resistance, so on and so forth. Okay. Until price eventually is consolidating around the first profit target. This is, so if we were to walk through this again, right? You'd likely take an entry for calls. If you're trading options as you know, I do, <laughs> or just a long position, whatever you're using this for, you take an entry for calls here. You would take profit. The moment we hit one of the profit targets, if you're still holding some of your position, you would take more profit at the second reference point. So the first line of dots is known as the orb take profit number one. And the second line of dots is known as the orb take profit number two. OK, and so that is how you would walk through intraday price action there. So that's the first part of this indicator. The second part of this indicator is the average daily range zones. The average daily range zones, or ADR, are calculated as the difference between the daily highs and lows average over some period of time, typically five or 10 days. These rectangular zones on the chart, they serve as hidden intraday resistances, okay? This is one of the most, if not the very most important indicator, in my opinion, because price tends to respect these areas significantly. And if you didn't have this on your chart, you can experience unexpected reversals that you wouldn't have been made aware of otherwise. If you've ever had a trade that reversed on you and the stock didn't seem to hit any resistance that you could see, it's very possible that the ADR may have been Y, okay? So ADR zones, they can be used for entries and exits, as well as very significant reversal points on the chart. This red rectangle on the top is known as upper ADR, okay? So this is your intraday resistance point, typically on any given day. The green rectangle is known as the lower ADR. So this is the upper ADR and the lower ADR. The lower ADR tends to function as intraday support. On the chart, you can kind of clearly see how price reacted to both areas. We started the trading day right here where my mouse is at 930. We came down and we bounced off of that lower ADR. If I go to the one minute chart, this can be even more clear. Let's go to the three minute instead. Maybe that's we can see that price came down, hit the lower ADR, and then bounced. Just about bounced off around twice. Came back up. You know, we did have an orb breakout. As we went back to the upper ADR, you see that price used this as resistance. Where we're testing this area, and we actually pulled back some after testing this area about three times on intraday okay eventually we came back and broke this area and that was you know probably very bullish for the ticker but you kind of see how price is respecting it very significantly okay on this trading day we had an or breakout right but we're focused on the adr here we went up we hit both take profits and then we hit the upper adr what happened after we hit this we had a significant pullback on the stock on this trading day, right? After hitting the upper ADR zone. So this area could have been, is, is used as a very significant reference point for where price can likely reverse. So 
in this case, maybe you took calls according to the orb on this trading day, but then as you took calls and you helped to maybe both take profit points and maybe further, you would use or look at this red zone as a place that you'd likely want to exit your position or at least look at it as a significant resistance point that we may not get past. We may react pretty aggressively. And so it did. So potentially you took calls off of the ore break and then you took profit expecting a potential reversal off of ADR. So that's typically how it is used intraday. So maybe if you didn't have any position and it hit ADR, you could use this as a reference point for the reversal that you can take puts on. Okay. So you may take calls, take profit, but then up here on the reversal, take puts and get the pretty decent intraday day trade. Okay. So let's look at more examples and use cases. On any given trading day, as we use ADR, okay? Because ADR, the average daily range, is calculated by, on average, the daily highs and lows average over some period, right? If this is the average range of which a stock trades, if we break above said range very early in the trading day, that signifies a high momentum breakout. Whereas we can see a significant trade run potentially the entirety of the early morning, okay? So on this stock, on Coinbase, on this trading day, we broke above the ADR on the second five minute candle, okay? Very early. So what I define as very early is typically within the first 30 minutes, okay? Um, so we break above ADR. That can, itself can actually be used for a potential for calls as well. I kind of just went over how it can be used for an entry for puts on the reversal. But if we have a high momentum breakout above ADR, that can signify that we are we can potentially run. Okay, so we could use a break above ADR very early as an entry, and you see that we respected it. We didn't fall below it much. We respected it and wicked off of it and held above, and that then can be paired with the orb breakout, which itself also serves as another potential entry. Satisfying both of these results can then lead to a significant trading day move, okay? And on this day, Coinbase moved about 8%, all within around the first hour or hour and a half of the trading day. So this can provide an earlier entry for us to see a significant move. Okay, here's another example on Etsy. Okay, <clears throat> Etsy broke above the upper ADR within the first five minutes of the trading day. In the very first five minutes. So I'd like to tend to look for a break above the first five minute candle if we do do that as well as a close above ADR for confirmation. But again, to recognize that trading within the first 30 minutes is a risk. So while these are all possible entries breaking above ADR, right? We understand that as a risk, but still using context that this is signaling a high momentum breakout. Up here, we eventually did break above orb as well. And that both of all of this is giving us context to take calls. So if we take calls, ride the price action up, we hit the first line of dots or take profit number one. And you see that as soon as we hit the dots, we literally reversed off of it perfectly, right? So taking profit there is significant. We actually retested it one more time and another opportunity to take 
profit and it reversed. So this is showing you one example of how these take profit levels can be scarily accurate. So this is a really great reference point for you to have your entries and exits simplified just like that. Okay. So in this example on a mat, right? So a mat had bearish momentum. We started the trading day here. And again, I'm still on the five minute time frame. And within the first 15 minutes of the trading day, we broke below lower ADR. Here, because it's only been 15 minutes, we are still defining the orb here, right? We still have are defining the opening range because it has not been 30 minutes that has passed. But at this point, now that we broke below this and they're closing below this, this is giving us some reference point that this can be a high momentum trading day. So eventually, by the time that the orb is established, this could, this first circle could be, you know, a bit of a risky, but still an opportunity to place your first line of puts, while the orb breakout would be your confirmation for puts as well. So breaking below both is then giving you a lot of information. Okay, so we came down to the first orb take profit and this trade depending on your expiration would likely have paid you quite a bit at least 30 percent to 50 percent depending if you were on weeklies or next week contracts or whatever contract you feel um, comfortable in terms of expiration we fell even further all the way down to even the second line of take profit levels and further okay the reversal part of the range rush reversal on this trading day you saw here that we first began this trading day up here right and on the first five minute candle it appeared like we were attempting to potentially break above upper adr but as i said prior i like to look for the second five minute candle or the second 15 minute candle for confirmation to break above the first in this case we did not we rejected adr and we failed to break above so we can potentially use this rejection as an opportunity for puts okay and eventually it came down and even had an or breakdown for some more confirmation so this we use as a reversal point because there was no confirmation that we broke above it. So if there's no confirmation we are breaking above it, this is now acting as its intended purpose as a resistance. And off the reversal of the resistance, we can take puts. As price came down to the lower ADR here, you then saw that we bounced. And not only are we on the lower ADR? We actually hit the first orb take profit from the puts. So if you did enter puts, you you know, you would likely have taken some profit down here, knowing that the orb take profit level is there, as well as we have a support on the lower ADR. If you had no position, and maybe you recognized that this is a major intraday support level. You could have used this as an opportunity for calls, potentially on the bounce for this reversal. Okay. Context is always very important. It is always very important. And that is why you would likely want to review what is the current context that is happening on any given ticker so we can expect some upside movement. So in that case, with that level of context, that could be potentially used as a reversal point for calls. And you see that the stock actually bounced quite a bit. It bounced quite a bit and reversed back into the opening range. Okay. What happens here if we don't satisfy any of these scenarios? 
in this case, we see that the opening range is established and the ADR, upper ADR and lower ADR are also established. But Tesla on this given trading day really didn't seem to break out of either, right? Every time we tested the high of the opening range, we whipped off of it. We didn't break out. When we tested the low, we didn't break out. We we're really wicking, right? And any time that it seemed as though we were going to break, it didn't happen fully. This is an illustration of when potentially not to trade, given that there is no confirmed direction. We know with options trading that consolidation and choppiness is very detrimental to our position, whether we're in calls or puts. And essentially, if you were to anticipate consolidation, you could choose a sideways uh, strategy with options, because that, that would also be an opportunity. But just with knowledge that most people only play sort of one side or the other, whether it's calls or puts, and instead of playing both for a sideways strategy, um, you know, this is something you would likely want to avoid. Some other use cases as well as notes to have here is I often pair this indicator with other strategies and indicators. Okay. Like I said, context is very important. So if you currently have a trading system or other indicators that you like to use, you can really see how flexible this is by pairing it with other indicators. What I like to use this with is our volume indicator. So that indicator, I'm going to search it here. It's called volume plus our vol slash alerts by Zen and the art of trading. So what this does is that this is a different form of volume. Okay. So this volume does not highlight whether it was, you know, a red candle or green candle. This paints all volume as equally gray, but it gives a threshold by calculating the average volume over a given period. And then this line, sir, this pink line here serves as a kind of a moving average. And that if volume crosses above it, we can clearly very see that this is above average volume. So when we are above average volume, that can certainly be used effectively to see how momentous and how strong is this current breakout. So by pairing this with this example here on Coinbase, for the moment that we broke above the ADR first here on this trading day, so starting from this candle, that we broke above ADR with high volume, okay? So f just from the beginning, we know that lots of volume is here and volume started increasing further and further as we even retested ADR and started breaking the opening range. And you see the break of the opening range ended up being the highest candle of the first 30 minutes. As we fully broke it, do you see, again, because so many traders in the market and the market makers are looking for this confirmation on the stock, on any given stock that we break above here. And so we can use this to help us with more confirmation that we are breaking out of the or breakout and that we are not getting faked out <laughs> essentially. Okay. Another side note here in terms of installing the indicator in some reference points for installing the indicator. Okay. Is that this also additionally works on futures. Okay. So if we look here, we have the settings <laughs> of the indicator, right? By default on the default settings, these are the default settings. So we typically use session four. Session number four is the U S cash session and the stocks session. Okay. From nine 30 to 4 PM EST. We can actually use this indicator additionally on futures 
if we switch to session five. It's named the New York Forex Open, but it can be used with the, the regular S&P futures on that session. So we can clearly see it kind of works here as we begin the session here at 6 p.m. EST, a given trading day. And here, you break orb, go to the price targets, and it's respecting the price targets very accurately. Again, this is the magic, so it seems, of the indicator, right? That we were respecting the price targets and entries, and we are simplifying it by a significant amount. What else is in the settings is that you can set what multiple of the price target by default, the 5 and 10 is used and so i'd kind of recommend to keep it there because they are pretty accurate the length of the opening range it can be set to any time frame but by default it's the 30 minutes we went over this whole strategy using the 30 minutes some people prefer the hour i prefer the 30 minutes just because again by understanding that a measured move comes after the 10 a.m est mark um, it gives you enough time to be in and out of the, the market on <laughs> given trading days sometimes. Um, because at times, the first hour can be a lot of information to be waiting for, for confirmation of a breakout. You can also customize the color of the ADR as well as the color of the orb. Okay. Is that you can set alert functionality. If you right click on the indicator, you can say add alert on the RRR. So you can set alerts for any of the conditions happening on the stock. So you can set alerts on the price breaking the range. You can say only once or once per bar, once per bar close. I tend to like either only once or once per bar close. If you set either once per bar, or once per bar close on whatever time frame you want, whether it's the five, five minute, 30, that can be set so that any time on any given ticker that you set this on, any time the orb is broken, you will be alerted, especially a close above or right that's probably more confirmation so if we click create every time that coinbase on any given trading day breaks the opening range whether it's to the upside or to the downside i will get an alert so this is very useful for automating and simplifying your trading regimen because if you have a handful of tickers that you trade often you can just set this alert on all of those tickers once per bar close, and that will direct your attention towards the tickers to know that they are more favorable in terms of momentum and potential trades. The same is true if you potentially, if you're looking for the high momentum breakout setup, you can set, let's say upper ADR, once per bar or once per bar close, set that on any of your favorite tickers and that you would just wait on any given trading day to see, is it breaking above the upper ADR very early in the trading day? And that can then be signified that you have now an alert system to know every time that there is a potential high momentum breakout on any given ticker. That is the power in this trading tool. So some final notes here on the indicator, some notes and warnings. Please know this indicator, like any indicator, is not perfect, nor is it 100% accurate. And it should not be the end all be all of your trading strategy. It does not serve as financial advice for any trading instrument and there will be times that will look like this on the chart. It's looking like it's going to break above the orb, but doesn't last long. And it's a fake out and it reverses on you. A decent reference point 
what I look for is typically looking for a close above or below opening range. So a close above on the five or 15 minute time frame. You can use this indicator on any time frame up to the hour from the five minute to the hour or literally could be the one second, the one minute to the hour, but I prefer to use it on the five and 15. It does not change, right? It doesn't change how you are looking at it because it's all price action at the end of the day. But a close on the five or 15 minute time frame I prefer to use. But it is important to manage your risk at all times by using stop losses on any trade taken from these entry point references. So if you're trading options, it's also important to buy safe expirations on your contracts, given that these reversals or fake outs can happen and that this indicator will not be right 100% of the time. But what this indicator does do and is very useful for is for determining very solid and simple reference points for your entries and your exits. I hope you all have enjoyed this video. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching all the way through. I hope that this tool brings you higher returns and gives you way more confidence in your entries and exits and heightens your skills and of course, your profits. Thank you for watching. This is Kia Keeley and I'm out.